don't make many new rivers. And the next best thing we can do is repair. Spread Creek is an incredibly important native cutthroat fishery. We've got Snake River fine spotted cutthroat trout that evolved like everywhere else in the upper part of the Snake River Basin. For the last 40 years, cutthroat trout from the main stem Snake River have not been able to migrate up Spread Creek. And that's because of the Spread Creek Dam. Taking down a, a dam that was here, blocking access upwards of 30 to 50 miles more upstream is, uh, you don't get a chance to do that very often. The Spread Creek Dam is about 20 feet tall and it's about 100 feet wide. Like a lot of dams in the west, the Spread Creek Dam was built for irrigation purposes. What we've got here still right now is a healthy resident trout fishery, those fish that live in smaller stream environments. Um, what's important about Spread Creek though is it has incredible amount of habitat in its upper reaches that historically the larger fish that are down in the Snake River proper, uh, the main stem of the Snake River, historically accessed for spawning and rearing purposes. And if you could picture or try to imagine a fish as it migrates up and running into that type of structure and not being able to go where it wants to go, it kind of breaks your heart. And I think this project is gonna do a good job at addressing that issue. Besides fish species, there are other species that could also benefit from this project. There's ospreys in the area, herons, and even grizzlies frequent the area. Trout Unlimited was able to sit down with the water users downstream, explain that their water rights will be preserved, their water flows will be preserved. Once the dam is removed, we're still gonna maintain water use and deliveries. And we're gonna do this by moving the point of diversion upstream and then building a series of rock weirs that each have about a one foot drop so that native fish, not only trout, but native non-game fish are gonna be able to either move by jumping or by traversing through those rocks. We rarely get to work on a project that's gonna have this much immediate benefit to habitat. It's a real uh, privilege to be a part of such a beneficial project that's going to impact uh, so many miles of river and uh, it's, it's just a great project. I'm very excited about it. I think there's a couple really exciting things about the Spread Creek Project. I think first, to actually be able to sit down at a table with an incredible array of stakeholders over three years and come up with a project that actually works and restores a functioning river system is incredible. Um, the other thing is I'm a, I, I'm a fisherman, so the idea that these fish that have not been able to go someplace that they've wanted to go, they've pounded their head up against this dam for 40 plus years, and next spring they're gonna be able to go where they wanna go, that's pretty special, and I'm really looking forward to that. The most exciting thing is, is seeing it come out. So I'm here at the old dam site. Um, we uh, finished construction last fall. Um, we've got all the new infrastructure up and running. Um, we're working with the park and the other stakeholders. Uh, I'll tell you one thing now, uh, fish can go up and down for the first time in a long time. And that's pretty exciting. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna study and monitor things. We're here on uh, Spread Creek, five or six kilometers upstream of the former dam. And we're capturing and tagging uh, Yellowstone cutthroat trout to to look at and see fish accessing the Snake River now that the dam's been removed recently.
So we're tagging here a uh, fine spotted uh, Snake River cutthroat trout. You can see much more, uh, much finer spots than say you'd see on some Yellowstone cutthroat trout and a higher density of spots. Obviously it's cutthroat trout, you can see the beautiful slash. And we're tagging these fish with a 23, 23 millimeter pit tag. It's an electromagnetic tag. And this allows us to document the, the, the long, all the movements and survival, growth, etc. We anesthetize them. We just put a small quarter inch incision. And then it's an individual specific tag so we know where this fish came from, how big it was originally, and how big it will be. Uh, it allows us to develop some models with growth and survival. 615.2. We've put an antenna down at the former dam site and we have two antenna there so we can get directionality. We'll know if a fish was marked here. We'll know that it passed through the antenna and is headed down to the Snake River. These tags are individual specific so we know that which specific fish this was. We know the GPS location of where we caught it and then we can track movements. The one thing that we expect to see from this project is that fish will start to move upstream from where the dam used to be. And then you'll get the genetic mixing and just a more robust population. You know, when we finished construction last year and we had taken out the dam, kind of one of my first thoughts was, you know, how difficult these type of processes are. Um, it really does involve a lot of different stakeholders, a lot of different experts, um, and then a lot of people that have really helped from day one in terms of fundraising and project development. Um, these things really have a spirit of their own. One very nice thing about it is how you can walk up and see the changes. You can walk through it. You can wade the stream where there once was a dam or look at structure that's improving habitat. It's very tangible and that's very rewarding. I'm definitely looking forward to fishing on Spread Creek. What would I use today? I probably, I saw a few drakes flying around when I just pulled in, so I I think I'm going to try about a size 10 parachute atoms. Spread Creek is a classic example of aging infrastructure. It's a problem that plagues the West. We have all these irrigation facilities that were built somewhere between 50 and 100 years ago. They're all decrepit, they're declining, and originally they just weren't designed to meet the needs of the fishery resource. So it's a real problem, but it's also a real opportunity. And Trout Unlimited is going to be there working with ranchers and farmers to try to address those concerns. In other words, try to update and modernize that infrastructure. But this time around, do it in a way where we can design it so that it benefits the fishery resource as well. Concept of uh, opening up this many miles of river when it's, we don't make too many new rivers. And it's almost as if this project comes as close to that as you can.